So, some people wrote down a few questions. I'll take a look and do my best to answer them. And if there's any other questions, feel free to just come up or raise your hand. So I'm Todd Fink. I'm from a band called The Giving Tree Band. Anybody ever heard of The Giving Tree Band? <laughs> Got in from Minnesota this morning at 4 a.m. after playing a festival. So, sorry if we are always waking people up in this city, traveling in the middle of the, in the, middle of the night. So this first question here is, how do you adapt your lifestyle to the road? From Jeremy. Do you feel life on the road is fun or more of a chore? Well, it's both. It's, it's both a great adventure and probably one of the most you know, interesting lives you could lead. At the same time, it's, it's very challenging. And um, you, have to, you have to really love that experience to want to do it, I think. You can probably imagine being on vacation and even on vacation, like in paradise, you get to a point where you kind of want to go back to your own bed and have your own pillow and all that and get back to your life, right? So imagine, we just did seven weeks on the road, playing five, six nights a week, driving four, six, sometimes eight hours a day, sometimes through the night, sometimes no sleep. We had experiences where we played in Dallas and get out of a show at two, three in the morning at a club in Dallas and then we're playing in Austin the next day, but I have a television interview at 5 a.m. for the morning news. It's three hours away. You finish the show at 2 o'clock in, in Dallas. You drive straight to Austin. You haven't slept. And you do a television show in Austin, do a few interviews, and then you're loading in for your next show. And there's no sleep, you know. So it's a huge chore. But there has to be something inside of you that's driving you to do this insane <laughs> insane type of, of work so the way that I adapt is I think I think of it as a, as, as a great opportunity there's so many people you know that come to me all over the country and even in, in other parts of the world when we travel and they're just so fascinated by what we're doing and and I realize now that it's just such a special thing to travel all over the all over the country and all over the world and the reason I'm doing it is because I want to share the joy of my personal experience with other people. I want to make other people feel better. I want to give something inspiring and uplifting to them. And I really feel like the music is just a front for that, actually. So that drives me. That keeps me going. And, and I think when you have that kind of inner drive and that inner happiness, you're okay without sleep. You know, you're okay with with the challenge of the road, and when you feel like it's all one big great adventure, it gives you you know enough motivation to keep going. So, hopefully that answers your question. The next one is, what is the thing you miss most about home when traveling? It's pretty easy for me. The thing I miss the most when I, when I'm traveling is routine. I don't like that I don't have a routine when I'm on the road. I also don't like that, you know, I don't know what I'm going to get to eat. Because I have a pretty strict diet, as do a lot of people in the band, because health is important. If you're not healthy, you won't be able to tour very long. I know many artists over the years, three, four years, they can't do anymore. Their health has gotten so bad from life on the road and from their diet. If you're eating fast food three, three times a day and that's all you're eating for 150, 200 dates on the road, you're not going to be so healthy. And if you're not healthy, you, you can't perform well. So I feel like that's one of the challenges of the road, and I miss making my own food. And Z there, our drummer, he, he cooks a lot at, at the home and studio. We love making our own food, so I miss that. I miss the routine. I like having a routine. I want, like, if I, when I'm off the road, I want to get up at the same time. I want to go to bed at the same time. I want to know how my day is going to be structured so that I can get the most out of it. I think on the road, you have to be on, uh, with the understanding that your routine's out the window. You might sleep, you might not sleep, there might be dinner, there might not be dinner. No problem. You, that's not why you're there, you know. I remember a quote from, or a story from Miles Davis, the great jazz trumpeter, and he was at a concert in New York, and one of 
the newer members of his band came up to him and said, Miles, can you believe this? This spread they provide for us, whole like, you know, buffet of all kinds of food. And Miles just said, I didn't come here for the food. So that's the way I try to think when I'm on the road, that it's just about, you know, bringing joy to people's lives and handling the task at hand. But I miss the routine of being at home when I'm on the road. I miss people too, but actually being an artist allows you to see more friends and family than you might get to otherwise. Because we're going to all these cities and I'm ending up seeing my families and friends in all these different cities all over the country. Normally, like, if you're not traveling, then you would have to actually find what you want to do with your, you know, two or three weeks or whatever limited, of, limited amount of time. And usually that you just want to have for yourself and your family. So you may go years without seeing family and friends, right? So, who live in other parts of the country, but I, we get to make these rounds and see all these people. So, I feel very blessed in that way. Third question here is, if you are holding a note, I assume this is singing, if you're holding a note, how do you control your breath? Well, one thing, I'm still learning how to sing. I feel like I'm still becoming a better singer, even at 35 years old, I'm still trying to figure it out. One thing I've learned um, recently, more recently in, in my career is that you have to really understand what your range is. And to do this, it's helpful to sit down at a piano and just start singing notes. Find out how low you can go and how high you can go. And then in between that, you're going to have a sweet spot. In between that range, there's going to be a group of notes that you sing the best, that come out the strongest. You can hold them longer. And while you're doing this, while you're singing the notes, find out at what point you have to pull air with your breath from a different location. In your sweet spot, you can sing from the chest and higher part of the abdomen. And there's a lot more power there. And then you'll find as you go along, at some point, the air starts getting pulled from your neck and your head. You're weaker there. You know. So when you find that sweet spot, you should sing more there. That's going to come across more powerfully. But at the same time, None of this really matters because however you want to sing is all good. It all, all that really matters is how you feel about it. I mean, we've heard all these Bob Dylan songs today. We love Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan couldn't really sing that well. <laughs> but people love him, right? Because it's what he's, what he's all about and the stories that he's telling that, that matters the most. So, you know, that'll help you with singing. But at the end of the day, what's, what's behind the notes is what's most important.